in the land of Egypt, when Egypt was the greatest country, we were slaves there. When they had Pharaoh and all of them, that's why I was trying to tell them earlier, we're not the same people. A lot of people, we walk around saying we're Egyptian. Right. That's not who we are. We were in Egypt, but we wasn't we wasn't the Egyptians. We were slaves there. We the ones that built the pyramids. We built all of those major cities. You understand? A lot of stuff is going on. The church is not really telling us the truth. But brother like him, he's kind of wise in his mind. Say, so you know what? I need to really know what's going on because I'm hearing a bunch of different stories about my own history. I'm supposed to know that, right? Did you know about that? When they brought us from that Mayflower, when we sold our own family from Africa. Stop. Then they went to South Africa and steal all our diamonds. Okay, well, I'm going to deal with something you said just now. Real quick, you said we sold our own family from Africa. Yeah. That's, not, uh, that's not the truth. That's Wait, not man, what ain't know nothing about no Africa. Let me show you something. That's not what happened. Egypt or nothing. Right we, didn't, out. We, didn't sell our, we didn't sell each other from Africa. All right? Because we're not even African. Let me show you. What's your, what's your nationality? Let me explain that right now. Hold on. Let What's your nationality? To you. Let me explain something to you. If I was to ask you, Zai, what your nationality was, right? Based off of what we've been told, what would you say? What would you call yourself? I tell right. you what you are. But the common answer is just you black, black, black man, African but they call you African American when you right. came over yeah. here. And then before that, they called us what? Darky, Afro American, oh, Negro, nigga, even other names that they've given our people. Yeah, that's what we came be, to America. Like what I was asking is, what's the real truth? Because okay. if I've been called so many different names, you got to hold on. I can't teach you if you're going to talk over me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Zai got to learn. You know what I'm saying? He can't humble spirit. I need you to have the same spirit. So. If we've been called so many different names, the question is why and how and what really what really are we? Okay. So let me get that in um, the prior river power. Before we came over that I'll ocean. tell you up front. If y'all are from America, if your father you feel your father is from America, a uh, North American black man, he's from the tribe of Judah on this sign right here. That's right. That guys, Israel Israel is in Africa. Yeah, Israel is in Africa. We are from the land of Israel. We are from Jerusalem. We're from the motherland. That's our homeland. Jerusalem is our yeah, motherland. motherland. Right. But when you said we sold our own people. When you said we sold our... Bro, you right 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 shut on, bro. Right there. Look, anyway, read that. You see it right there? The motherland and all that right there? You see all the that? Right the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. So why that happen to our people, the so-called blacks, the, the, the uh, American blacks of Judah? Watch what happened to us, though. And thou shalt become an astonishment. They said we shall become an astonishment. A proverb. A proverb meaning a wise saying. They say a lot of stuff about us. Oh, black people are never on time. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, Mexican people, they all ride in the same car. Right. Stuff like that. You know, read on. And a byword. Matter of fact, you walk around with your hoodie on, and you might, you know what I'm saying, get approached by the cops because you got a hoodie on. Yeah. Bring it out. They're, you're dressed inappropriately for the weather. What? Yeah. How you going to tell and us how to dress? That's all I say. And, like, a lot of the white folks, they look at the black person different. The black man different when they have dreads and all that, but they don't know that's actually our culture and like our hair is our scrum. Yeah. So when they judge, when they judge a person who got dreads, oh, he's a criminal, he's a thug, and all that. They're looking at us with face value. Yeah. It's a proverb. They, they come up with wise sayings. They already have a, a, a preconception about who we are before they even know us. That's why right. they're easy to shoot us down without even really understanding the situation. Bring it out. But that's what happens to us. That's a curse that's happening yeah, to our people. Yeah, that's a curse. It shouldn't be like that. That's why you're asking the question. What am I and what's my history? You know? A proverb. Uh -huh. A byword. That's what I was talking about earlier. Byword. Oh, one, 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 ten years you called uh, African American. Then the next ten years you called a Negro. Then you called black. Then you right. called. All the, I'm calling all these different names. That's a prop. That's a byword. First they call you an ex, but we came over here rich. And a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Every country you go into. The black man is called a different derogatory term. Correct. In every single country. Uh, so let me get uh, verse 15. I'm going to show you why that happened to us. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. You know. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You familiar with the story of Moses, right? Moses is actually our forefather. Right. right. Moses is not white like they show on the TVs and the churches, the little, the little printouts and stuff. Moses is a black man. 
And he was telling us back in that time, he said, look, if y'all don't listen to God and the commandments he gave y'all to follow, y'all gonna have curses that's gonna follow y'all, even in 2020. All these years through slavery, those things happen because they're spiritual. He said, we broke the commandments. God is only our God. He's not the God of everybody in the world. That's right. They, 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 they taught us that lie, and for, for years, we've been believing that. God is only the God of the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and that's it. Right. Matter of fact, let me prove that so I don't just be talking, you know, my own mind. Give me that, Joel. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. God says, you're going to know that I'm only in the middle of y'all. I'm only dealing with y'all, the Israelites, right? We don't. And that I am the Lord your God. Am I everybody's God? And none else. I'm the, your, I'm, the, I'm the Lord your God and none else. He said, I'm not the God of anyone else. So, because of that, go to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. I'm going to show you something about you. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. Hey, what's going on, bro? We don't. For thou art in the holy people unto the Lord thy God. It says, you are a holy people unto the Lord. Who's God? The Lord thy God. It says the same thing all throughout the Bible. It's our God. We don't. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Like you got a favorite pair of shoes or whatever in your closet. You know, you got a bunch of different shoes, but those favorite shoes, you kind of wear them more than often, right? Right. Your favorite right shoes. Yeah. You love those shoes. We don't. Above all people god has created all people but he has a special people that he loves more than anyone else right that's who we are that's why he gave us laws to, to follow we have a certain kind of code of conduct to live by but because we have forgotten that we've broken those laws and that's why we have curses that's facing us right that's why we call it different names that's why we went into slavery like you were saying earlier yeah. i'm gonna show you that in the bible go to deuteronomy 28 verse 60 uh, you want to finish? Yeah, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Uh -huh. Good. We are above all people on the face of the earth. That's why we excel in sports. We excel in the music industry, Bring it the up. movie industry, even in business. We got some of the best ideas. We just don't really have the money to back it up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can talk to any brother in the hood and ask him, yo, what uh, what, what do you think should, we should do about the next phone or, or a pair of sneakers? He can draw something up quick. He's like, dang, that's hot. Yeah. But we can't do nothing with that. Teach. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So way back in time, in the land of Egypt, when Egypt was the greatest country, we were slaves there. When they had Pharaoh and all of them, that's why I was trying to tell them earlier, we're not the same people. A lot of people, we walk around saying we're Egyptian. Right. That's not who we are. We were in Egypt, but we wasn't. We wasn't the Egyptians, we were slaves there. We the ones that built the pyramids, we built all of those major cities. You understand? So when it says we're gonna go back into Egypt, it's talking about bondage or slavery. Give me that in Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse two. Watch. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. out of the house of bondage. He called Egypt the house of bondage. So he's saying, I'm the Lord your God, and I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt. I brought you out of that slavery, right? Watch this in uh, Deuteronomy 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So now he's saying, look, Moses is saying, look, when y'all break these commandments, y'all going to end up going into slavery again. But how this time? With ships. You're going to go into slavery with ships. Did that not happen to our people? Yeah. That happened. That's the history you was asking about. I can show you right out of the Bible the question that you wanted, but have we learned that in church? No. Nah, no. We haven't learned that in school either. And that's why I really like, I really don't go to church. Yeah. Because it's so many, and then I, I really feel like it's so many different versions of the, uh, of the uh, Bible that is all handwritten, man-made. Well, there are a bunch of different versions and translations that they're putting out nowadays that's actually corrupting the, the real message of the Bible. Even in churches now, they're trying to push the, the new international version of the Bible. Bring it that's up. a good thing that you don't go to church because you're not going to learn your, your history in church. You're not going to learn that you got to keep God's laws in church. Yeah. Us breaking God's laws as, as a people is what got us in the situation we're in. You understand? Bring it in up. church, they, go, they teach that you're not supposed to keep God's laws or his laws are done away with. That's, that's the whole equation of this whole thing. That's the answer to our, our problems. God's laws must be kept. 
But in church, they tell you don't do that. So you shouldn't even be in there. You know what I'm saying? The Bible that we reading right now, the King James Bible, that's actually written by the book of Exodus, chapter 31, verse 18. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony. So when Moses was at Mount Sinai, he was actually talking with the Most High God. God is black. He's our God. He was talking with him. And then what happened was he got the little tables of testimony, the commandments and everything written on the stones. Let's see who wrote those things. Two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. God wrote the Bible. You understand? Yeah. And it's been written down and like transferred into pages and stuff throughout the history so that we can keep our records. This Bible is our book. It's only been given to us. You understand? Look at the Psalms. The book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 11. You know. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. So we had great prophets, great men of God who actually published the Bible as God was giving them the inspiration. Everything that we went through in life, we had men that were writing it down. You understand? Yeah. And today, this is our record to go back and learn from our mistakes, learn from the things that we can apply today to fix the, the problems in our communities. What other, what other questions did you have, like, as far as, like, okay, I want to know about history, or, like, what other, what's, what's up on your mind? Because I heard you earlier say you were reading a lot. I'm just trying to kind of get a gauge of where you're you at with it. Oh, I, I, like, I read, but I, I, like, I read a whole bunch of, like, like, urban books, like, not even, I will not even say urban books, it's, like, Okay, okay. So you, so you read up a bunch of different books trying to figure out like what's the real truth, what's going on. There's a lot of knowledge out there. Yeah. I got you. I used to read a lot of good books too. Watch this. Then we go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. It, it says be careful of reading a bunch of different books. Because what happens is you have one book by a certain author. And his intention is to, is to uh, teach you a certain doctrine or understanding from his perspective. Right. Then you got another man who, wrote some book, who writes a book about the same topic but a different perspective. And now you're trying to figure out, well, who's, who's, who's talking the truth? Who's really, really bringing out the truth of what I want to learn about? You know. You read 500 books, and now you got 500 different ideas in your mind, and you don't really understand what's going on. Read on. A making of many books. There is no end. There's no end to that because you're always going to have people writing books and publishing books. You're always going to be searching for the truth. Right. Read. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Uh -huh. let, us hear, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So in all your studying and reading, here's the conclusion of all of that. Read. Fear God and keep his commandments. Like people were saying before, the whole point of everything is to fear God and keep his commandments. No matter how many books you try to read, this is the book that has the commandments in it. Those other books don't have God's commandments. So you can read them all day, but you're not going to get what you really need. You're not going to get the answers you're looking for. You're not going to get how can I fix my problems in the community? How can, I fix my, how can I shape my future? Get Matter out. of fact, how can I be saved from the destruction that's going to happen on this earth? Right. Did you know that in all the books you've been reading so far? Did you know that this earth is going to be destroyed? Yeah. By how? By fire. What kind of fire? This fire that just, just come from the sky. Yeah. You heard that, right? Yeah, I heard that. Okay. Give me Second Peter cool. chapter 3. The book of Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So it says the day of the Lord. That's that day where God is going to come back and bring judgment on this earth. All right? That's not a day that everybody's going to be happy about. It's going to be real, real, real crazy. Like in all the movies, like Independence Day, stuff like that. A no. real crazy scene. Read on in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. It said the heavens are going to pass away with a great noise. That's going to happen with fire, but it's going to be a certain kind of fire. You ever seen those nuclear bombs that they be creating in different countries? You know. The big missiles that they're creating? Yeah. That's not just for show. That's not just to put in a museum somewhere. They're going to use them missiles. Those missiles are going to be aimed right here in America. Nobody likes this country. If you watch the news, the CNN, stuff like that, they show you only what they want you to see. 
But if you watch international news, you can really see what people are saying about America. Yeah. This place right here is coming to an end real soon. That's so right. We are. And the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. It said the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. That's all your buildings, your cars, your houses, trees, everything is going to melt. That's the kind of heat that we never heard before. That heat comes from nuclear destruction. We do The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Everything. That's that fire you're talking about. It's going to be burnt up. This whole place is going to be destroyed. So we don't. Watch this. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. So now that you know about that, you know about this place going to be burnt up. Read. What manner of persons are ye be? Are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? It's saying, how do you get yourself ready for that? Nobody can prepare for a fire like that. But it says, what again? What manner of persons ought ye to be in all hope in all holy conversation and godliness? It says you got to be in holiness and godliness. So obviously, there is some kind of way of escape from that crazy fire. Some people are going to try to run, drive, whatever they can do, fly out, try to go somewhere, hide in the bunkers. You can't escape that, no matter what. They got missiles that can go under the ground and tear all that up. But it's saying, look, there's a way you can escape from that. Read on. Looking for and hasting until the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Uh-huh, read on. Nevertheless, Watch this. we, according to his promise. So us, the blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, according to the promise, because God promised us a new heaven, a new earth. Watch this. Look for new heavens and a new earth. So we already know when this earth is destroyed, there's going to be something else after that. Not everybody can understand that. The books that you read, they probably are saying something about it, but not the way it's saying it right here. Watch this. Wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved seeing that ye look for such things, mm -hmm. be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. That's keeping God's laws. In order for us to prepare ourselves for that day, you got to be spot and blameless. You got to be diligent in keeping God's laws. Right. Now, it always talks about the same thing, no matter what or where you go in the Bible. God's laws is always the answer. Even if, even if that day were to come next week, you start keeping God's laws between now and then, and you sincere and diligent with it, you just might be able to be saved from that fire. There's no other way to be saved from it. There's no other way from that. You understand? If somebody said, oh, I'm a Negro or whatever, the question should be, who am I really? What is my real nationality? If I can't, if we all got three different answers, what's my real nationality? The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. How y'all doing? The ox knoweth his owner. It says the ox knoweth his owner, right? An ox is a very dumb animal. But that animal still knows who he belongs to. Read. And the ass, his master's crib. The ass, a stubborn animal. He can take him all the way across the block. He'll find his way back home. Right, right read on. But Israel. But Israel. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It says what? Doth not know. We don't know who we are. Read on. My people doth not consider. Whose people? My people. God says you are my people. And what else? Doth not consider. We don't even research who we are. We got we got technology at the palm of our hands. Right now. We still cool with just being called black or African American. First Timothy chapter six verse twenty. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings, and oppositions of science right. falsely so called. Right. So that's that science that it's talking about that uh, that genealogy and trying to figure out yourself with yeah. your DNA. Yeah. Yeah, that's opposition. Yeah. It's opposition of science. Yeah. The Most High God didn't want us to do that. You understand? I'm not trying to test each other's DNA. Nah, because the people that the actually people that run science, our DNA, it wasn't necessarily for us to make DNA for science. The so-called so the so -called white man that runs that whole science so thing. White man that runs that. Yes, he's a he's against what God wants. He's against God's creation. We used to scream Black Power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. 
Europe, I'm Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.